London Real, sponsored by Bulletproof Coffee. How did Carl transcend science so much at the time? Because you know there was no social media back then. There was no Twitter. It had to be on. It had to be him as a person and the production value of the show. Yeah. So I think uh, what I learned from Cosmos because I was already established as in my career path to become an astrophysicist. So his science expositions didn't influence me to become a scientist. What they did influence, it was kind of like an existence proof for me that it is possible for a scientist to have a bedside manner, a, t a fireside, you know, wow, I can just put him here. And when he's on the TV, he's actually like on the couch next to me, talking to me. He's not lecturing, he's not pontificating, he's just having a conversation. And he's speaking with a sort of uh, poetic grace that you had never heard before out of the vocabulary of a scientist of any kind. And there's scientists who could find some interesting elements of their profession and share them with you, and then you'd sort of meet them halfway because there was interesting. With Carl Sagan, he took steps beyond that in which he would find something interesting and then show why it mattered. To you, or why it should matter to you, why you should care, take it to heart. So science became not only an intellectual exercise, but an emotional one. And realizing that that was possible, told me that if there's ever, if I'm ever in a position to bring science to the public, that's how I'm going to attempt. That's what I'm going to attempt to do. And it requires some socialization, right? You got to know that who you're talking to and why and what they're thinking. And that doesn't normally go on in a in a, in, a, in a professor's lecture hall. The professor's under no obligation to care what's going on in your head while that lecture is being given. It's your responsibility to learn the material. You're paying for this privilege to learn. But in, in the real world, on television, on, in books, there's more of a, there's a different kind of contract with the consumer of that product. And to be successful, that contract has to fully embrace who and what the consumer of that product is. The reader, the viewer, the listener. Did you change your style after watching Cosmos? And, I don't know. I didn't really have a style. I was just style. entering graduate school. Okay. My first year of graduate school was 1980. Okay. So, no, I'd given some talks and things. But uh, looking at his way, I said, yeah, I'm, if I need that, that's what I'm going to reach for. Oh, yeah.